All right, good afternoon. It's been rainy and windy literally all day. So I thought that I'd just pop on when the opportunity came and then I can save it and then y'all can watch it later um, whenever it's more convenient for you. Um, so what we're going to do here is this is an optional um, background watercolor for the basket part. So if you saw my sample um, and saw me working on it, you will know that Hi, morning from the States. <laughs> You'll see that um, actually the color thread I used is this color. And then I wanted to add the watercolor afterwards. And that's why you have um, the watercolor that has gotten onto all the threads and actually dyed them. And that's why it has this almost like tie dye effect to it. And you can see where some colors took more than other colors. Um, you can still do it that way, like don't get me wrong, um, but I would recommend painting it first. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, again, <laughs> there's no like secret to watercoloring um, the threads when they're already on your hoop. You literally, I just got it wet on the back, I got it wet on the front, and then just dabbed the color all over. And I tried to keep it inside this circle. So we'll get started. I know I tend to talk a lot and explain a lot of things. Um, so for this part, I would only do the outside circle. So I'm not going to trace any of the other bits. So let's just pop this back in here. And I'm just going to trace... And this will be the absolute widest that I'm going to go with my watercolors. So I'm going to try and not get the water to go past this line. Good morning. I cannot wait for this stitch along. I'm so excited about this. I have loved incorporating watercolor in the last stitch along. Some people really like it and some people really hate it. So it'll be interesting to see like who chooses what, if you know what I mean. And I'm just going to go straight over these uh, flowers here. Because remember, I'm going to trace the whole pattern later. So I'm not going to try and, you know, in and out, in and out. Now, the secret to keeping this circle a circle is, like I said in the prep video, to make sure this right here is super, super tight. You want to make sure that your, your hoop is tight, your fabric is tight in the hoop, and that your... Threads are going this way, so straight up and down like a cross, so you can see the crosshairs on there. What happens is if you draw the circle and then tighten it up, you're going to get parts of the circle that are going to move out of place. So really, I should have tightened it before I did this bit. Yeah, but since this is just a practice one, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see better. because I don't want this circle to be in the comments. Yeah, so let's just move it up like this. All right, so I've got this um, watercolor palette. Let me just, no, there's no brand on it. Um, but I got it from Michael's in the States, but they have the same one at Hobbycraft if you are here <laughs> um, in England. My niece has been using this and you can totally tell pink, yellow, white, what colors she likes, green, because they're really dug out. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use probably this one and probably one of a mix of these browns. Um, like I said earlier, it's always great to have a sample hoop around because you never know what your colors are going to look like until they're on your fabric, really. So of course you could uh, not have a hoop to paint on you could just paint on regular paper and have a look and let's just try and mix a little bit of this together here and see what color that is so I'm just like blotting it on there now the first thing that you can see is that I've rubbed it a lot already yeah 
So here, when you get your fabric wet, it will just be wet. But the more that you rub it, rub it, the more you get these little, I call them like little BBs, but it's basically just the fibers um, scrunching up together. So you really don't want to agitate this too, too much because what will happen is you'll get this big texture um, on here and you can see the more that I rub it. I'm pushing quite hard. The more that I rub it, you can almost see you, can you tell what I'm talking about here? So you don't want to go too aggressive with your watercolor. Um, but whatever color you choose is totally fine. So if you want to do a bit something a bit more warm, you can add the, those yellows in there. I would add yellow, but I haven't really got any. Yeah. It just depends on what color you want. Obviously, you could go even darker and do a nice dark, where I put that wet? That's almost like a purple brown, very reddish brown. It just depends on what color that you wanna do. So here's, here's the technique. This is what I normally do. Um, I'm gonna get the fabric wet. You can also use a really stiff brush for this, for this part. I think I used oil with this, but we'll see. Because it will go through a little bit better. So this is just water. And you can see I'm not getting really close to the line. Because once this soaks in, it's gonna bleed out like that. Okay, and then you can also flip it over and do the back if you want it to be really saturated. Okay, that's pretty wet because it's just dripped, yeah? It is so windy, you guys. All right. Now, the outside edge is going to be um, sewn solid. So we really just need to make sure that all of these stitches that you can see through them, that those places are colored. Um, so don't, don't get too obsessed with, oh, it has to go straight to the edge or, oh, it bled a little bit or whatever. That's that's fine. And then we're just going to take this. I like to use a smaller brush for this. Whatever color that you'd like to put in there, you can either dab it on. You can do a bunch of different colors if you want to mix them all together a little bit. It's a bit dark for me, I think, that one. So I might stay with this one here. What is this one? Let's see what color this is actually. Might be a good shout. Just brighter. So we're just putting the colors in where we've already got it wet. Now, depending on how much water you put on here and how much paint you put on here and how much water you put in here or paint, <laughs> then you'll get uh, a different amount of color. So if we just put that one to the side for a minute, um, we'll take one that's not wet yet, like uh, this red here. If you put a little bit of water in and you swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl, you're gonna get a much more saturated color, It's gonna, which means it's gonna be darker. Yeah, because there's not a lot of water in there to water it down because it's watercolors. So you can see with this, very, very, very dark, very saturated. 
So the color is the color. When I say dark, I just mean like the, that's the exact color that that is. If I meant dark as in like shaded, that means you'd have to add black to it. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit too artsy on you. But if you add a little bit of paint and a lot of water, so I'm just depositing the water in the paint, I'm gonna do one little swirl. You're gonna find that it's not as deep of a color on there. So you can really play with how dark or saturated you want your colors to be on this basket. Um, keep in mind that I've not traced the pattern yet. So I want to keep mine not too, you know, covered. I'm gonna, I am going to use a lot of water because I still need to see the pattern behind my watercolor. And we're just being careful to not try and go outside that line too much. What if I added a little bit of this to there too? Like a, or even like gray. Um, also, if you mess up, then you can always just um, take the water and feather it out like this. Or you can just take straight up cold water and rinse it on here and it will make the color a lot lighter. So this is what we're looking at right here right now. On the front and on the back. Um, you can also take some scraps if you have any scrap fabric. So I have some from the kits. If you feel like it's getting too wet, you can take some scraps like this and just lay it on there. And it will soak up that water. And I actually sprayed some right there. So let's flip this over. Do the other side. Obviously you can do like a napkin as well if you wanted to use a napkin. So I'm just taking off that water, that's all. The only thing you have to worry about with this is that if this is wet and you put it on here, you're gonna get that wet. So we're trying to keep it just in this circle. So you have to be a little bit alert. You know, what you're putting where when you do it this way. Just flip it over. Wipe the back a little. And still, I'm taking off color and I'm soaking up um, that extra water. So from there, it just depends if you like this or not. So this is quite yellow. Um, I would definitely let it dry or do a uh, blow dryer. Like just shoot it with a blow dryer until it's almost dry. Um, and then see what the color is. And you can always do a little bit more. Yeah. You can take the color away as well, just like we just did, um, just by getting it wet and blotting it. Um, but if you look here, you can still see through. Where did I trace this? There we go. You can still see through to trace your pattern later. Yeah. So actually I could go a little bit farther. with my, got my pattern wet, with my water and with my color. So it's definitely something that, um, it makes it look like, wow, you did all of that, that's amazing. But actually it's quite a simple, a simple technique you're you're literally just putting a bit of water on um obviously the more water you put the more it's going to spread out you can also do uh like i showed before which is putting only a little bit of water into the paint 
and then painting it all that way. Um, but you're going to get a color that you won't be able to see through very well. So there's lots of things to think about when you're doing the watercolor on the fabric. It just depends on, you know, what floats your boat, what you like. I wonder what this color is. Guys, when you let four-year-olds in your paint, you need to supervise them. Oh, it's like an interesting, interesting color. I would say I would start light. You can always add more. You can always build the colors up. Um, if you're a little bit like, oh my gosh, this is too stressful, you know? Do a little bit, add that color. Do a little bit more, add that color. And some of this depends as well on what color you want for your basket. So if you want a super dark color for your basket, then it might be nice to have a lighter brown for the background because then uh, all the stitches are really gonna pop on there. Um, if you want a really light, light color, then you might want to really put like layer up that paint. So let me just pull a color real quick. I'm not going to use this color, obviously, because dark colors on the stitch along do not go very well. We all know that. Um, but if I did all my stitches with this dark, dark brown, no number typical but it is a really dark dark brown not black here's black if you want to see it next to it um then that would look quite cool because you, they would really pop out let's see here's a lighter brown not as dark as that one but still quite dark Again, would look really nice on there. It just depends on what you like, you know, what you're into. I don't really have the perfect brown, like what I would call the perfect brown, um, because this is a bit yellowy, orangey for me. I guess I could just paint it all dark brown and then do the light on top of it. So it's really just playing, playing around until you're happy with it. Ooh, I think my neighbors are home. I can hear them outside. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope I explained it well enough. If I do a nice dark color like that. Okay, and the other thing I want to say is that um, when you're finished, leave it flat to dry. Don't leave it up like this, like that or anything, because all of these things are going to fall down. Oh, I can't see because I was zoomed it in. All of the paint is going to fall down and all of the water on your hoop is going to fall down. And you can actually see it already. Do you see? If I show it in the, do you see here? I, there's a big line of water there all that is going to come down your hoop and we want to keep it inside the circle let me see if I can't just blot that a little bit 
There's so much water on here because I was working for too long. And good afternoon, Mary. I did see you on there before I... This is actually quite a nice color. I feel like I did a good job. It is a bit warm still. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but on here, you can definitely see where I did the first circle of water and then it's bled out a little bit when I put the water on the top. So... I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I still am going to do the other tutorial, which is the applique tutorial. I'm just going to get a new piece of fabric. Um, I'll end this one and save it and upload it to YouTube a bit later. Um, but stick around. Give me like five, ten minutes. Um, and then I will... <laughs> I like when you go live later watching you from Texas. I do try to go live a little bit later, but sometimes it's hard I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in like five, 10 minutes. I'll end this one and then I'll show you how I cut the fabric and how we're gonna stitch it on and everything. Um, so I hope I'll see you in a little bit. Um, if you've got any questions about the watercolor technique, then just shoot me a message, let me know. Um, even with this, you should be able to see the thing pretty well once you get the light behind it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so enjoy your day and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, bye.